Am I alone in this? Does anyone else see spaces and stew over tweaking them for months? Most of the time I don't wait months. But sometimes I just don't know what will make it better. But it's kind of like one of my favorite quotes says, change happens when the pain of staying the same is greater than the pain of change. This one, though, this has been months. And I've even discussed it with my kids. <laughs> so what's changing? Well, I said tweaks, right? First things first is cleaning up this shelf. I don't normally go for pulling everything out, but we wound up with a mouse or two or a family over the winter. Now, thanks to Little Bit and Charlie and my son, they didn't take up permanent residency. I do not deal well with such critters. I typically shriek and hide. <laughs> anyway, I've been blocking any gaps and holes with expanding foam as well as filling in the vent registers since they are disconnected and open underneath. And then I am shifting things around after this gets clean. I didn't even realize there was an issue up here, but obviously... Apparently, mice can climb. I am just dusting it down and then wiping it. There is a, a groove in the center, so I definitely wanted to make sure and get that cleaned out and then spraying down to disinfect. I am not doing the, the next shelf down, but I do have my mom's old pressure canner in the corner, and that is actually filled with canning supplies, and it's in the corner because, well, it's the dead corner, and we don't use it. <laughs> but it's pretty and a bit sentimental, and I have high hopes. So after it's clean... I'm shifting things around to make a clear delineation on the top shelf. Stuff we use and stuff we don't. Yes, I'm keeping long term not getting used to storage in my kitchen. The goal here is to get it all in the dead corner. When I showed you guys the metal racks a few weeks ago, I think I mentioned this, but overall most of the stuff in my kitchen isn't attached or won't be shortly. The upper cabinet areas are one place this doesn't hold true around the stove it's because i couldn't get them detached but the wall this wall was by design i just took the cabinet doors off over by the stove not directly above the stove because that cabinet would get or the stuff in that cabinet would get very dirty Anyway, my old refrigerator was on the right-hand side, and when it took a turn for the worse, I chose to experiment with a mini-fridge, so I had counter-height workspace right there, and we loved it. Eventually, I ripped a stack of drawers out and put a second one. <laughs> um, it was supposed to be an experiment, but the camper never got its fridge back. That opened up space for this shelving right above it, and so I ripped out the cupboards and the shelf and put in these wooden shelves. They are each made of two 2x6 two boards. I hate to say this, I'm not sure what kind, and I'm not sure what the best wood for kitchen shelves is. My guess is these are probably pine. I wound up opting for a multi-pack of brackets from Amazon that are black and metal and heavy duty. If I was doing this again, I would leave about another inch of gap above the toaster oven. I would just like move this bottom shelf down just a smidge. That said, I am likely going to put another shorter shelf underneath that toaster oven for um, gallon and half gallon jars. A few storage ideas if you are a visual clutter bug. This three-tier paper tray on its back works well as a chopping board organizer or a baking tray storage thing. The wall-mounted bars work well rotated and used as hanging under shelf storage. And I have also used little 3M hooks on the wall to hang measuring cups and various items that don't fit well in the tool turnabout we use for silverware. You can see the funnel and the tea ball thing, but we also have things like the pastry blender hanging up. Having a kitchen shelf with hooks underneath has opened up the amount of storage quite a bit. 
when I first installed these replacement kitchen cupboard shelves, I sized the gap to hold our toaster oven, but the plates filled the gap as well. And cups were also stacked and coffee mugs. I don't know how we fit everything up here, honestly. And of course, a lot just never made it to the shelf because we would wash and then use it. So it was dirty again. <laughs> if you want wooden shelves for a kitchen wall, I highly recommend using the thicker boards and more braces than you think you actually need. A large kitchen shelf stacked with dishes gets heavy very quickly, so screwing into multiple studs is a necessity, and adding a multi-layer kitchen shelf gives you more ability to have decorative items for kitchen shelves, but remember that kitchen cupboards protect against dust while a chef's kitchen or industrial kitchen or industrial far farmhouse kitchen. What was I calling this kitchen style again? <laughs> Um, anyway, having things open makes it easier to grab stuff, but needs to be rarely used so it is washed before use or used all the time so dust never has a chance to accumulate. I fell in love with the idea of open shelves when I stayed at an Airbnb for my brother's wedding. That kitchen was so simple and looked so clean in terms of lines, yet homey? I haven't been able to find a picture, sorry guys. And I haven't been able to find the listing either. So I think you're out of luck on that. Just use your imagination. It was very decluttered though. Just fair warning. <laughs> um, I did take pictures of that kitchen though. Um, I just can't find them. Anyway, a couple weeks ago, I heard someone say open shelves in a kitchen either need to be for everyday use items or long-term storage, and it does make perfect sense. Kitchens produce greasy dust, and yes, mine is no exception. Every time I use something from this shelf, it typically needs washed unless it is in constant use. So hearing that kind of flipped a switch. If I'm going to store stuff here, why not protect it from the dust a bit with how I'm stacking it? and make it a bit safer while I'm at it. Over the years, I pulled stuff out of the shelves to quarantine, first to my closet, and now they're in boxes under the rack on the other side of the kitchen. This has done a couple of things. It has streamlined what's on the shelves, so it just looks better overall, but it also helps with my clutter threshold in that at any one time, I have many less things that can get dirty, and be in the pile of dishes to do. Although at the end you will see that I had stuff that was meant to be decorative up here and just got shoved to the back and lots of lids. My daughter has requested that lid storage be further to the right. She is the shortest in the house but does get lids for jars some and could barely reach. Who am I kidding? I had to be on my tippy toes and pull them out with my fingertips so I don't know how she reached. I have also wanted to thin out my supplements that are down below. So my afternoon stuff is going to take up a bit of space in the second bread basket as well. This seems counterintuitive, but I think I might start using multiples if I take stuff at multiple times of day. So things are all in one place for that time of day. I do have a ton of lids that need pared down. Not all of those are going back. Some will get recycled if I know we don't have what they go to, and others I will toss in the boxes in case we still have the bottoms. My kitchen is going to feel empty when my kids move out. <laughs> so like I mentioned at the beginning, it's definitely tweaks. I didn't get rid of a ton of stuff. I just reorganized stuff a little bit so the stuff that we aren't using isn't stuff we have to move to get things that we do use. Have a great week you guys and remember a few minutes at a time add up to a big change over your lifetime.